Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And this is just gonna be a super quick one. Uh, I wanna talk about a couple of things you can do to run other processes from inside Vim. Um, the most obvious one, which you probably already aware of is this so-called bang command. Uh, so I can do something like bang uptime and run this command, get the output, um, or I could do bang ls to get a current directory listing. Um, I can also read the contents from one of those commands and dump them into the current buffer. So if I were to do read git submodule summary, I'm going to get a submodule summary uh, dumped into my buffer there. Um, and that works fairly well for just single isolated commands that you might, might want to run that are quick. Um, another thing that I often do though is run more than one command at a time. And in that case, opening a tmux split is often a natural thing to do. Um, so I can run a few commands and then go back. Uh, by closing the split and I'm back in Vim. But a possibly even lower friction way to do this um, and one which applies even when you're not in Tmux is to hit Control Z to suspend Vim. And that effectively pauses execution of Vim and, and you know, once again I can run commands as I see fit and then bring Vim back to the foreground with this FG command. Um, so what I recently did a couple days ago was add something to my doc files. Here we go. I just want to share with you now, uh, which is this little function that allows me to use control Z to not only background, but also to foreground so that uh, I can just quickly mash the two and go back and forward if I want. Um, so to demonstrate what that looks like, I'll hit control Z and then I'll hit control Z again, and I can just repeatedly mash control Z and go back and forward. Um, the reason why I like that is because it makes the two operations more symmetrical. Um, you don't have this asymmetry where to go in one direction, you're recording a couple of keys and to go in the other direction, you're running a command and hitting enter. Um, when you can just mash control Z in both directions, it's less work for your brain to have to do while you're thinking about other things. So let's just briefly look at how this is implemented. Uh, basically, we just bind this FGBG function to any time I press control Z in the shell. Um, and then up here, you can see we're checking whether or not the buffer variable is zero length. If it is, that means the cursor's at the start of the, the input buffer. It's at the left right after the prompt. Um, and so in that case, when you press control Z, we're just gonna run FG, uh, which brings whatever was in the background to the front. Um, if it is not the case that the buffer variable is empty, then we just pass the input through. Um, so that's a technique that I got from, uh, let's have a look here, from a couple of places. Um, this is the commit where I added it to my .files repo, but you can check these out. I'll, I'll have the links in the show notes. Uh, funnily enough, this link is already dead, I think maybe, but whatever, I'll make sure the links are valid and um, you can check them both out. There's a couple of different ways to do this, but they all basically boil down to this kind of pattern. Um, one final thing I'll mention, uh, some people use Vim Dispatch as a, a, a plugin to run long running commands from inside Vim. Um, that's definitely another option, not one that I've felt like I've needed of late uh, because it's pretty easy to use Tmux splits and some of the plugins that I use already use Vim 8 style asynchronous communication. So I don't really need uh, Vim Dispatch anymore, but it's still a useful plugin and, and a lot of people will use it. So that's all I've got for now on running other processes. Uh, I'll be back in a bit with another screencast on Vim. Thanks for listening.